Well, good morning, everybody. I am certainly excited to be here and to present Vienna to you. Who's been to Vienna already? Okay. Our tourism director would love to see that. Um, now, in the next couple of minutes, I'll take you for a bit of a different journey to Vienna. A short trip around not the historical parts of the city, but some other very interesting parts. And here we are. I love these views, actually, from the wine yards. Vienna is a rapidly growing city. It's a city of approximately two million, not yet two million, that is competing with Berlin uh, as being the two fastest growing cities of the German-speaking area. We're growing at a pace of about 25,000 people per year, which means we have to, to build a small town each and every year, in addition to what we are already. Now, building a small town each and every year, if you design it properly, is always an opportunity to improve the already built city. And we must be doing something right. You may have heard that we are regularly ranked as the world's most livable city. Two years in a row right now, according to Economist and according to Mercer, 10 years in a row, which corresponds to the 10 years that I was deputy mayor until I <laughs> left office. Um, and changed my life um, last uh, July. Uh, now, you may be skeptical about counting livability with points, and you may be right. So this is why I would like to define this a little bit. I say, a livable city is a city where people live because they want to, not because they have to. And when is a city livable? I say, a city that's good for children is a city that's good for everybody. What's good for children? We want our children to grow up in a safe environment. We want them to be able to move around freely, to play, to have contact to nature. Children love playing with water. These are all things that we love ourselves as well. And this is why young couples, when they know that the first child is arriving, tend to say, well, now we have to leave the city and move to the suburbs and buy a little cottage, which means that they end up living there. Now, I don't know if you agree with me, this is not a city. This is a carpet of boxes. And we know these kind of cities. They may go on for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers, but this has nothing to do with urbanity. So, these people end in their cars and spend all their lives stuck in traffic jams, trying to get to work and to bring their kids to school and everything. So I say a good city has to provide all the qualities I was talking about before at the heart of it. This is actually a new urban quarter in Vienna, and what you can see is actually subsidized housing. Now, Vienna is an extremely green city. More than 50% of our surfaces are green areas, and what's more, Vienna is a highly affordable city. Vienna engaged in social housing a century ago, which means that right now, 62% of our population, 62% of our population, live in social or subsidized flats, paying this thus highly affordable rents. But these numbers are striking enough, but it's not about numbers, it's also about the qualities. What you can he see here is a historical um, building uh, of social housing, and I think you can already sense the qualities I've been talking about. Well, this is what it looks like today. This is an example of subsidized housing in Vienna today. Uh, it is actually a collaborative project because the new qualities have to do, of course, with involvement. So this was designed by the tenants themselves, and it provides anything you can imagine. It has lively ground floors, uh, it's amidst a new neighborhood with mixed uses, with vast green spaces, with traffic calming. Um, so the qualities I've been talking about, this is what we are reproducing whenever we have a chance to develop our city further. Just to give you an impression, this is a master plan of a new urban quarter. It's a former brownfield area that is being now converted into a new urban quarter. And this is another one. Uh, this is what it looked like in the master plan. And this is what it looks like today. It comprises urban farming as well. Um, in one case, there's even a lake uh, that people love to go for a swim, and what you can see at the back is subsidized housing. And that's another example. 
And this is an example of the lively communities that emerge in these new urban quarters and the way community life uh, is also part of the feeling of togetherness, of belonging together, of ownership, of living in such a place. Which leads me actually to the already built city. Um, can you detect anything smart or inspiring here? I don't know. I wouldn't go for a walk there. I'd rather go for a walk there, because this is what it looks like now, after we pedestrianized it. And it leads me to my main point. There's a quote by Jane Jacobs. She said once, the outside of the buildings is the inside of the city. And I couldn't agree more. It's been highly inspirational to me. And I believe that when we talk about livability in the already built city, we talk about public space. We talk about the places where we love to be, we slow down our pace, we can encounter each other, we can get inspiration. It is actually where city life happens. So I believe you need to have a focus in redesigning public spaces of poor quality everywhere in your city, and this just changes the feel of it. Now, in order to do so, you need a robust um, public transport system, which we have in Vienna. In Vienna, we have a highly affordable and very, very dense public transport system. And just to give you an idea of it, this is what the annual card for public transport looks like. Everyone almost in Vienna has it. About approximately one million people own it. And this is what it costs per day to use public transport in Vienna. So for one euro a day, I mean, for the Americans, one dollar, right? So close your eyes and imagine that for one euro per day, you could go anywhere you want, as often as you want to, using public transport. And then you realize why Vienna already has 73% of all everyday trips done by public transport, cycling or walking, and only 27% private car use. We plan to reduce this down to 20% within the next years. So it's a chance to take out the cars from streets and to pedestrianize and to improve public space. And this is just another example of a street that is being redone to look like this right now. The opening will be in two weeks from now. But it's also about using smart little ideas to, in, to create additional public space in very dense urban quarters. What you can here see is a terrace, actually. Uh, that was created hanging over a metro line, and this is what it looks like at night, just to give you another perspective of it. Of course, you need to involve the people when it comes to redesigning spaces, and of course, there's controversy whenever you try to take out cars and introduce alternative modes. You can see this is not exactly the nicest picture of myself. Um, <laughs> and the people there were actually demonstrating against cycling. There is this as well. So you encounter this, and the best way to go about it, I personally believe, is to give people the lead themselves, which brings me to the third uh, idea that I've brought with me. This is a community grant scheme that we introduced a few years ago. So people will receive a grant of 4,000 euros, um, and can implement their own ideas to change a little corner, some place within the neighborhood, according to their ideas. The only precondition is that it has to be free for everybody to use without needing any kind of consumption, and it's worked perfectly. It works on a dime, and we were able this way to have more than 300 such init initiatives all over Vienna within three years. And the best thing about it is, once one of these initiatives um, has come to life within a neighborhood, um, it just changes the perspective of the whole neighborhood overnight. Next year, you have people from the next street, from, from the adjoining streets coming and wanting to do something like this themselves. And I think that this is good because this is not top-down. It's a bottom-up kind of inspiration uh, that can really change the city. That's just another example of what can be done on these grants. And yes, well, thank you for listening. My last point is, actually, it's about thinking smart. It's about thinking out of the box. It's about 
combining different things that at first glance do not seem to belong together. In this case, this was actually a traffic safety campaign we started. And we thought, because people hate traffic lights, what can we do to make traffic lights funny and interesting? And because of the Eurovision Song Contest, contest we said, well, let's bring in a message for love and respect. And by combining these two things, we merged with one of the most powerful global campaigns in the last years that Vienna has ever had and spread into the world, a message of openness and respect and love. And with this picture, I want to leave you. Thanks for listening. Thank you.